My name is Rochelle Smith. I'm so excited. This is actually a teaser episode, as I alluded to a few episodes ago, but I just wanted to drop in an official teaser here and let you all know <clears throat> that this summer I'm actually going to be launching a new series on how to stop being a people pleaser. Now the truth of the matter is we all, again, just human nature. Human nature wants to be loved, approved of, accepted. All of these are, are normal human behaviors and mindsets. But unfortunately, that fear, fear will creep in. And what is that, that famous acronym? Fear spells false evidence appearing real. But fear will creep in and, and convince you that conflict is bad, Anyone getting mad at you is bad. Uh, you standing up for yourself and being assertive is bad. Um, someone not liking you is bad. Someone talking about you is bad. Someone not thinking well of you is bad. I mean, I could go on and on and on to, to what essentially just some of the just circulates on the rotisserie of a people pleaser's mind. Because quite honestly, folks, and for those of you who've known me a long time, will tell you, again, I'm a Southern belle. Southern Belle by nature, that's just who I am, but used to be a huge people pleaser. So I speak to you, as I do in all my episodes, but particularly the people pleasing and the rescuing, I speak with a great deal of experience in this area. I've been there, I know just how being a people pleaser, you'll be overworked, overcommitted, stressed out, you know, it's just, it's just not a good way to live, it's, it's the best way I can put it. And so I'm going to spend some time, various episodes, looking at this issue of people pleasing um, from various different angles. And I'm just so excited and looking forward to it because well, we, we've all been there. I mean, there's, we can all relate to this. You, you can't tell someone no or you can't set boundaries. Or like I said, you can't stand up for yourselves. I mean, there's just so many different ways that this fear of conflict, fear of confrontation, fear of disapproval, shows up and manifests in our life and, and essentially in a nutshell is being a people pleaser. There's several different books that I've read that helped me along the way. I'll share those on various episodes, but a good one that I'll highlight right away is called The Disease to Please. The Disease to Please. And it's a wonderful book. It talks about or talks about curing the people pleasing syndrome. So wonderful, wonderful book. Um, like I said, I'll discuss that more and share more and, and share more of my personal experience because folks, when I look back, again, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I was at the height of all my people pleasing, just insecurity of what's everybody going to think and always want to be seen in the right way and well thought of and all of this and that. And I just think about the absolute freedom that I have today, the absolute freedom of being secure and comfortable in my own skin. As I often tell people, is once you have your own approval, once you're secure in your own approval, other people, what other people think about you does not matter. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. I can't get on here every time with the goal of impressing you, making you always trying to strive to make sure that you think well of me. Okay, if I'm doing that, I'm in bondage to fear and insecurity and just worries and all of that. Because ultimately, I can't change, and I, and I essentially, I can't change what you think about me. I can't get inside your mind and tell you to do this and think that and think this. You know, cry, trying to create these illusions of perfection and, and all of that is an absolute waste of time. I'm genuine. I'm going to be real. I don't get on here, you know, being phony or anything like that. And so that's why, again, I'm free enough, I'm comfortable enough. In my own skin that it just hey it is what it is I am what I am you know take it or leave it um, and so folks I want you to experience this same level of joy that I know is possible for you it truly is will it be easy absolutely not is it going to require courage absolutely is it going to require confidence absolutely it may require confidence that you don't even feel that you have all right years ago I didn't have the confidence you know, that I have now no way, <laughs> truly, I mean, I've grown in a lot of areas, 
And so I'm just looking forward to sharing these lessons and, and, and just, again, sharing my own journey of growth to inspire you to know that you don't have to have the disease to please anymore. Yes, do you want to make other people happy? Do you want to make, make other people's lives better? Do you want to be a good person? Do you want to be a good friend? Do you want to be a good relationship partner? Absolutely. But living as a slave to other people's opinions and thoughts and wishes and whims is no way to live. There's a better way to live, and I can tell you that from personal experience. I mean, I could give you a lot <laughs> of examples from my own life where, again, the old people-pleasing Rochelle would have handled situations very differently than the way that I handle situations now. Again, just having a lot more confidence and, like I said, being more secure. This has just really transformed my interactions with people and just my life in general. I would not be as happy as I am if I were still a people-pleaser. There, there's just no other way to say it. Um, I'm free. I'm free to free to be honest, free to be candid. People may not like it. People may get mad. I may step on some toes. But again, it's all about being real. And it's all for me about truly helping people. Truly about it. And I can't help people if I'm consumed with trying to make sure you're happy and never get mad. Okay? And so there's, there's a very big difference between the two. I mean, I could give you a ton of examples of, of just how I've handled situations and kind of even take a, take a step back and say, well, man, you know what I mean? Like, even sometimes I'm shocked by myself. And last week, for example, so here at home, so trash pickup is Monday. So rule has always been, and I've lived here, bought my condo almost eight years ago, trash pickup day is always Monday. So everyone, we have the waste management does an excellent job. So you put your big waste management, you know, the big trash cans, at the end of every every driveway so we all have driveways we all it's just a wonderful setup so put your trash there so when i'm coming home from the gym last monday one of my neighbors has placed a black big trash can blocking my driveway okay my own recycled trash bin and regular trash um, are on the side of my driveway obviously um, but there's this black one that's centered right there in the middle of my driveway so the old Rochelle would have been like, well, you know, let's just all get along. Let's just whatever. But what did I do? Let me just fast forward. Came upstairs. Put a, wrote out a nice handwritten note saying, hi, neighbor. Don't ever place your trash in my driveway again. Use your own driveway. Have a nice day. And I put tape on the back of it and taped it to that trash can and moved it. And so it's just stuff like that. I don't care if somebody gets mad. I don't care if there's conflict. I don't care where they're at. Whatever. We all have our own individual driveways. And you need to respect the boundaries of your neighbors and place your trash where it needs to go. I mean, that's just one, exa one example. There's a situation that I dealt with very recently with a, a local business here in Metro Detroit where I had been in to inquire about um, a service. And so they, you know, it was very common these days. Permission marketing. They collect your information. They ask, you know, can I get your name? Can I get your cell phone number? Whatever. And so I ultimately did not purchase anything or move forward with this particular business. But then I start getting text spam to my cell phone. And so this started happening in about March. It was about March. But finally last week it came to a head where again four times I would get these spam emails that had nothing to do with me. Um, because again, it was more for people who were already involved with their process who would move forward. And I'm thinking, okay, and there's, a, I can't remember exactly who said it, but essentially there's a famous saying of, if you ask someone to do something or stop doing something three times, at that point, you're basically negotiating with yourself. Okay? Because the person obviously is just not responding. And so I had sent four different text replies saying, take my number off this, take my name off this, to no avail. And so what did I do? I looked up the corporate, <laughs> looked up the corporate contact information, sent a nice, very detailed email to corporate explaining what was happening at this franchise location and what actions and steps I was going to take to make sure that this situation was resolved. Because again, I've been mentored by attorneys, I've, I've know some wonderful attorneys, and, and I'm just, you know, I always knew my rights in a situation. 
And so I'm going to move forward on these different steps, file a com online complaint with the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, and move it forward to the Michigan Attorney General, then if necessary, move forward with my own attorney in this situation. And so wouldn't you know, the next day after I contacted corporate, I received an apology via email from this person saying that my, they were going to remove my information and I wouldn't be contacted again and I'm sorry to bother you and this and that. But it's just, again, stuff like that. A people pleaser would look at that and say, well, you know, I can just delete the text or, well, you know, just blow it off or, you know, this person, they probably just have a lot going on. Okay, people pleasers love to make excuses for other people. But the bottom line is we need to recognize what we deserve in life. We deserve to be treated well. We deserve for our boundaries to be respected. When we tell someone no, that means no. When we tell someone stop, that means stop. All right, and it shouldn't have to become a potential civil issue or even a criminal issue for behavior to stop. So I had no qualms about contact to corporate, laid it out. <laughs> This needs to talk right now, and they were very happy to hear from me. You know, and again, because I spend so much time undercover in franchises, I know corporate always wants to know if mediocrity is existing at, at the franchise level. They always want to know that. So, but that's an example. I don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you badmouth me. I don't care. I don't care. Okay? It's all about doing what we know is right for us and, and having a good life. But again, protecting, protecting various aspects of our lives. When I was at Northwestern, I remember this, last year, last, so this would have been September 2016, on campus every year for a leadership symposium. Fast forward, I'm at this situation where a, a session is about to begin and it's on fundraising and athletics and they're talking about the new you know, athletic facilities they're working on, building and all of that. And it's wonderful, that's great, but beforehand there's always a little networking and chatting. So. A member of the athletics fundraising team is talking to me and schmoozing, whatever, this and that. And again, the old people pleasing the show was real insecure. And I would have felt like I needed to say the right things and always be pro-Northwestern, even athletics, even though I follow zero Northwestern athletics. Um, but then this particular fundraiser, he asked me, he said, so, you know, what sports, what sports, college sports and stuff do you follow? LSU. Oh, really? What's the connection? And then I said, the connection. Oh, so do you, you follow Northwestern sports at all? No. <laughs> you know, and again, there would have been a time, there would have been many years where I would have said, well, you know, yeah, from time to time I catch a game and whatever. No. Because essentially I need to be honest, be real, and shut that down and, 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 and negate any type of expectation. That Because the bottom line is I'm not giving a dime, with all due respect to Northwestern and the school and the university, a fundraiser talking to me about possibly giving some money to athletics is a waste of time. So for me to lead anybody on or make anybody think otherwise was just not going to happen. Okay, last summer, so the summer of 2016, when one of my alumni affiliations and someone on that particular leadership team or executive committee he said, hey, I'm going to be rolling off of the executive committee in this particular role and we'd love to have you, you know, serve on this. We think you'd be good. What did I tell the person? No. I don't have time for that, okay? But the old people pleaser, well, you know, I really want to be thought well of, and this is really a good opportunity, and it would really look good on my resume. Okay, I don't care. But you see what I'm saying? The old, the, the older show would have been all over that. This is another notch on my resume, and I want to make this these executive committee members happy. Okay, I don't care. What, what's, what's important in Rochelle's life are Rochelle's priorities, and many times they're going to be different from what other people are expecting or want me to do. And so I challenge you all in your lives, do the same thing. You've got to put yourself first. And if you've got a family, put your family first. I mean, just whatever the case may be. You can't just be running around trying to satisfy and make everybody happy and do what everybody's asking you to do and be what everybody else wants you to be. That is no way to live. I'm telling you from personal experience. And I've grown, I have grown so much in this area. So you may sit here and you may listen to me, and yes, I am, I am a Southern Belle. People that know me will tell you I am sweet, whatever, but there's definitely a no-nonsense side to my personality, and, and it definitely. But that's because, again, I'm not afraid of conflict. I'm not afraid of confrontation, all right? Healthy conflict is good. Problems happen. Situations arise. arise. We just have to handle them professionally and to the best of our ability. But so, folks, 
I can't wait to delve into this topic of people pleasing with you because much like myself, if you can get a hold of it, you can just recognize how it's sabotaging your happiness and sabotaging your life, you much just, just like myself, your life will be transformed by working on your own healing and cure from the disease to please. So I thank you so much for your time. Make it a wonderful day.